showing here is an article that I found from the Winter Simulation Conference of 1996. And what Canvas Fairhamand strives to do here is optimize a drive through And he is, he says the results could serve as a basis to provide recommendations on how to improve efficiency and throughput for the fastest growing industry and the largest employer in the U.S. Now, my current problem that needs fixing is the Burger King that I've been working at for the past two years. We staff currently three people in the kitchen, one drive through and one front man. But the waiting on customers, customers have been complaining on their wait. So we are trying to give them a less wait, but at the same time, customers want quality food, so we have to make sure that we are spending enough time on each order. We do not get a ton of orders per se, customers, it's just we take a while with each order and sometimes they get backed up, but we are not non-stop with customers. So what he does in this article here is he attempts with two drive throughs how it works, with two front men. And he also tests out the people in the kitchen. And he says which one is the best choice and would help the drive through serve people the quickest. So he made a bunch of different case options. And case seven is along the lines of what we are trying to do. For this is where we start right now, and that's just a drive-through that uh, doesn't. It's a low frequency, and we want to try and maximize the frequency. But at the same time, we don't want to overpay customers. But it's a thin line because we want our customers to be happy with how quick we get in now. So over to the simulation. We're going to focus on. Total employee wages, which is up here. Gross profit, which is right here. And the scheduled utilizations. This is for the kitchen. This is the eating crew, drive through crew. And these times right here are the average waiting time that a eating customer spends and that a drive through customer spends in our system. So, first, you must acknowledge that. Our system does not pick up until someone pulls up to the screen normally or to the actual drive through So, and this system includes the people waiting in line for the drive through So our drive through time is normally a little bit less than this, but all the systems are like this. So any number we see here, our drive through time is going to be a little bit less. Than this. So just looking at how this system is set up, wages are based off the position the employee has respectively and you can see this right here they all have an individual wage profit is based off the average drive through customer spends and an average an eating customer spends eating spends more than drive through on average but not by much at our current location and as you can see we have three people Burger King follows a largest value first, where we will go to drive through And as you can see, our car has a priority of two, and our person a priority of one. So the largest value represents the priority. So we will take a car and make the car's order before we will the person's, as far as the kitchen goes. Now, if we go to the rate table, this is the time per day or per hour, half hour, we see seven. It's half of the time, because this, the rate is per hour here, so there's gonna be seven people that come in here on average between eight o'clock and 8.30. And then 8.30 and one, we see eight on average, and so forth all the way until 12 o'clock midnight. And you can see certain times of the day, like lunch, we pick up a lot in customers. And the total number of customers is around 600, 
and it equates to around 400 drive throughs and 200 eating per day. So, if I take you over to the table, you can see a 65 and 33. So the majority, the two thirds, is drive through, a little bit over two thirds, uh, or a little bit under two thirds, and then a little bit over one third is the eat in. And these are all free space systems. And now we can go back to the facility. So we were on it. I shouldn't again, even though the results were up on the screen. You can see the average is slowly going up as we hit lunch. And then we're gonna hit dinner. And the times we see here are unacceptable because an eat-in is four and a half minutes, but a drive-through is four minutes. That's way too long. We want to try and get the total time of the system down to at least three and a half minutes, or close to three and a half. So our first option is to add an extra person to the kitchen. There is space in our kitchen, so we're going to try that. As you can see, our eat-in time is now much less than our drive through but still, they are both extremely low compared to our previous results, but we're also paying $128 more for the day, and we don't want our eat-in getting the food quicker than drive through because the point of drive through is quick food. So we have to fix this, or us customers in drive through are going to be mad if people go in and out before they do. So... And you can see the four servers there. And to touch on how long it takes, a quick order might be a cheeseburger, and that would be about 10 seconds. The average order takes about 45 seconds, no matter the sandwiches, they can do multiple at a time. And then 360 is if we have to cook new meat, and that's very rare, but it happens. And our drive through the order, this consists of the time it takes to make the order, and the time it just takes to collect the money and give the bags because the people have the money ready and 25 seconds is usually the quickest people will come up they'll get the order in 10 seconds 10 to 15 because if they know what they want they come up to the window we collect their money give them their bag and they're on their way 55 is usually a maximum time they spend in talking to the drive through person and the eat-in, the random exponential 25, because there are some families that just cannot decide. They're waiting at the window and, or at the front, and they just keep looking at the menu, and they don't make a decision. So it can be a lot more, but it's very randomly, exponentially distributed. So that's a lot better, but let's see what else we can do. We have this, where our server is just a drive through guy, but he's going to handle both drive through and front. So, our utilization, our utilization back on this one was very low for the eating crew, for the one guy staffed on eating. So now we're gonna just make them both and see how that works. And obviously when we read that, our times went much higher. And if you notice, this is still largest value first but the time is a lot higher for the cars because there's a lot more waiting at times such as lunch. Now if we go over to our third and final option, we have two people who are both qualified for drive through so they both receive the same pay of $7.50 an hour. And we are gonna have two windows and two drive throughs where you can order simultaneously. And the cost to build an extra drive-thru is a little bit substantial, obviously. But at the same time, it would make customers a lot more satisfied and give the potential for growing more customers in the future because they see our quick speeds. You can see three and a half minutes is exactly what we're looking for. And 3.62 for the eat-in, which is good because it's a little bit longer. And that is largest value first as well. We learned when we went with the first in, first out, the times were much higher for the drive-thru, and we did not want that. 
And as you can see, that's two servers, and we've given them the same time average to, for processing because some people are going to be less, so that was the average range. And so I went into this model a little bit more and put some tables. We have an oven, some trash cans, doors, and this is how it came out. Obviously, each day it's going to be a little bit different because we're not doing it on a mass scale, but our utilization time just, or our time and system waiting time is still great. And the kitchen crew is being staffed well. It's very high scheduled utilization, but not too high, where they are still happy with their job and their pay. And our two men taking orders also will have time to clean the lobby as in their job description and maintain the facility, which is good. Now, $752 is $132 more than we are currently paying per hour. And that's because this guy's making 25 cents more and we have one extra person in the server or who is the kitchen cook. So we're paying a lot more, but overall we reduced the times by more than a minute or by a minute on average, which is huge when you consider that to be about 20% of the waiting time we just chopped off. So our solution is to add another window and to have two people simultaneously maintaining the front and the side. Now the reason we do first in, first out for the drive through servers is because when someone walks and they eat in, is because when someone comes to eat in, we want to collect their money as soon as possible and then put them in the server and have them wait and drive through and go before them. But if we don't get the money for eat in, they will walk right out and leave. Drive through are more likely to wait in line because they're still taking time to think over the menu. And that is the solution. And now I will show it in 3D. Go. That's the system. You have the front door, all the tables, the trash can, server back there. As you can see, that's the layout. And that's all we have.